everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name. We're so excited this morning to spend the time teaching and sharing with you, equipping you, bringing you into the accurate, precise, comprehensive knowledge of your identity in Christ Jesus. Co-hosting the broadcast with me this morning is my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Honey, good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast today. Amen and amen. Father, we pray for viewers out there the same prayer. Brother Paul prayed for Philemon, that the communication of your faith will become effectual, effective at the end of this broadcast, that you will come to a place where you acknowledge accurate knowledge, precise understanding, comprehensive insight of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. And we decree that you are strengthened by his spirit with might in the inner man. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. And we declare that at the end of the teaching today, you will be the better for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, today we're looking at the character of God. The mm. character of God. And if you remember the other day, we okay. said that prayer will have to revolve around the character of God. Mm -hmm. What is not in God's character? cannot be an answer to your prayer. What is not in God's character cannot be part of your prayer. Your prayer must be a reflection of God's character because God cannot do what is not in his character. All right? So the character of God will define the scope of your relationship and the scope of your prayer life. That's very important. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, when you read for us. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. This implies that the personalities involved in prayer is God and man. Hmm. In everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests, you, made known to God and God. Those are the personalities involved in prayer. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, only read for us. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. In the place of prayer, God does listen every time. Every time. That's why Jesus could say, Father, I thank you that you hear me oh. always. That means God listens to prayer all the time. James further explained the personality of God, knowing what he can do and what is not part of him. If you remember, we said that your prayer must be a reflection of God's character. So James now explains the personality of God, knowing what God can do and what is not part of God. In James 1.13, read for us, honey. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. God does not tempt with evil. It's like somebody says, you know, I have been very stubborn. God has been trying to get my attention. I refuse to give God my attention, so God gave me cancer to humble me. That's or God gave me a stroke to humble me. Or God crippled my business to frustrate me so I can look for him. God does not use evil. Evil is not in God's agenda of operation. Evil is not God's modus operandi. God does not tempt with evil and he does not do evil. He doesn't. No, he doesn't. doesn't. James 1.5 now. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and he shall be given him. That's in James it's chapter 1 verse 5. And it's in that James chapter 1, verse 17, same context, that it says, Every good and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. So God giveth to all men, liberally. to all men, mm. not to Christians. He giveth to all men liberally and operated not. See? And it shall be given him. Mm. Rather, James said earlier that God gives to all liberally, which implies that God's character is to give. To give yes. 
That's God's character. Yes, he's a giver. He just gives. God loves so much that he gives all. God is a giver. Keeps giving. He makes the sun to shine on, on the, the good, good and on the bad. bad. He makes mm-hmm. the rain to fall on the good and on the evil. He does not crop select. Crop grows for everybody. Yes, crop he grows. doesn't select a, a wicked man's farm to, mm-hmm. to not let rain fall on mm-hmm. it. It falls everywhere. So the word liberally means single-mindedness or sincerity. That is, God is single-minded about giving in prayer. in prayer. There is a willingness to give without defamation or fault finding, upbraided not. Mm. He does not defame you, and he does not look for your fault. God does not look for why he will not give to you. Mm-mm. He gives without defamation and without fault finding. His giving is not specifically on how we ask Mm. because his giving is not a reaction. His giving is not a response. Mm -hmm. His giving is a a Mm -hmm. pro-action. Before you ever asked, he already saw, that's what he says, do not take thought what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or what you shall put on. Mm -hmm. He says, after these things do the Gentiles eat, for your heavenly Father knows that you, have need, that you have need of all these things, and what that implies is He has provided. Mm-hmm. He has provided. The additions to our life. He has already provided it. So it's not when you pray that God starts running around. Oh, oh, let me see how I can. No. When Abraham was going to Mount Moriah, and Isaac said to Abraham, "I see the wood, I see the fire. Where is the lamb?" Abraham said to him, on the mountain, it shall be seen. It shall be seen on the mountain, which means it has been provided. Mm -hmm. So Abraham knew. He knew that Isaac will not die. Mm. God is not a taker. Abraham knew that Isaac will not die. He knew that God was communicating something to him. He knew that it was just a communication. Mm -hmm. That's why, open for me, honey. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Hebrews eleven seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. 18 and 19. Of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. The seed is not Isaac. The seed is in Isaac. Isaac. In Isaac shall thy seed, seed be, called. be called. 19. Hmm accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So Abraham knew Mm. that he was going to come back with Isaac, Mm. whatever happens. He knew that Isaac was not the target, Mm -hmm. that God was communicating something to him. So he already received Jesus from the dead in a figure. He had a picture he had a picture of Jesus' resurrection okay, okay. in his mind. He received him. Mm-hmm. So in Abraham's mind, since he can't see Christ, he, he saw, saw Isaac, Isaac rising from the dead, even if he kills him. Even yeah, if he kills him. Mm-hmm. And by that imagination, he saw, Jesus. he saw the resurrection of Christ. That's why Jesus said, Abraham saw my death. Right. He oh. saw his resurrection, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a, in figure. a figure. He received resurrection. Hmm. So it is not when we ask that God provides. He, it. Hmm. he already provided everything that you need in this life and in the life to come. All has been provided. God is all-knowing and God proacted ahead of time. There's nothing that you will ask God now that will take him by surprise. Mm-hmm. He already knew you will need it and mm-hmm. he already provided. Jesus said, your heavenly father knows. He, he knows. knows what he's talking about. He knows. Because he is God. He knows you he have, knows need, of that you have need of all this. So chasing after them doesn't make you make get it. Uh, chasing fact, after them doesn't make you to hinder yourself. But when you seek Focus, God yes. and you are enriched with all spiritual Trans- treasures, yes. from the point of victory, you, you can go get the natural God. things. Yes. From your position in Christ, you can now go and take delivery of your things in the natural. You You see that? Now, his giving is based rather on his character. Mm -hmm. God's giving. Yes, yes, that's true. James 1.17. I read it ahead of time, but read it again. 
every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He doesn't change his mind. Mm -hmm. He does not repent. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. He does not repent. For God to repent would mean that something took him by surprise. Mm -hmm. And he had to repent, change his mind and apologize. <laughs> then he won't be God. He is God because he knows everything and everything he does is right. Yes. That's why he is God. He knows everything and everything he does is right. He further highlights God's character as the one who does no evil. Mm. Every good and perfect gift is from the father of lies. Mm -hmm. All that the Father gives is good and perfect. Yes. This is constant about God. Yes. Everything he does. Yes. Everything. And that will be that everything he has already done with you in mind is perfect. Yes. So don't give room to the devil. Don't. When he offers you alternatives yep. and you settle down there and say, maybe it's God's will. You know, many people still believe that when bad things happen, it was God's will. It's God's you know, will and, of and, teaching them. And, you know, don't settle for it. You should resist the devil because good and perfect gifts come from the Father. And that's what ignorance and wrong teaching has done. Has made days. us think that sometimes bad things can happen from God. We, and we cite Job. Yeah. Remember, Job was talking in his ignorance. Yeah. Later he said, now my eyes have seared you know, thee. Yeah. I've been hearing of thee by the hearing of the ears. Yeah. So don't follow Job's uh, example. Jesus came to show us what God is like. That's and it was only good. Yeah. And, you know, back in the days when we used to listen, you know, at the beginning mm. to the elementary teachings of Kenneth Copeland, mm. Kenneth Copeland said these were the songs they used to sing back in the days. They were mm. talking those songs like, Sick, sober, and sorrow, broke, disgusted, and sad. Since I've given my life to Jesus, I lost everything I had. And he said, oh, and then yes, when they amen. Oh, oh, yes, amen. amen. Oh, yes. And, and they start crying. True and be feeling and pious. Uh, and be feeling accepted by God. Sick, sober, sorrow, disgusted, and sad. And since he has given his life to Jesus, he lost everything he, lost everything he has. <laughs> and they used to feel very religious mm. about it. You know, it's like songs that we also sang back in the days also. Songs like, uh, it's not an easy road. We're, We're traveling, traveling to heaven. heaven. No, no, it's not an easy road. Mm. Jesus said, my, my yoke, yoke is easy. easy. And my body is light. Mm. You stay with what Jesus it's said. It's why you're struggling by yourself that it's not an easy road. It is because of the <laughs> struggle, legalism, yes, that, that created all, easy, all those songs. songs. Because under the yoke of bondage, bondage, you can't be perfect. Living for Christ is impossible. It's impossible. Totally impossible. Mm -hmm. Under the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. That's why it's under a yoke. Under the law, yes. Under the law. Mm, you can't. Because it's all about you making efforts mm. to be accepted by God and you can and never you be accepted. And you see how you're feeling all the time. And you keep failing mm. on until you yourself will extract yourself by yourself from <laughs> God's plan. But when you I'm come surrender. into Christ, you come into rest. Mm. When you come into Christ, you come into the finished work. When you come into Christ, you come into guaranteed assurance of salvation. Mm. So there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, and there is no change of personalities with God. Glory. There's no dual personality. Mm. Like some people say the God of the Old Testament was sharp. <laughs> the God of the New Testament it's is too, dull. No, that would be a God of dual personality. Mm. But God never changes. That would be different gods. That would be two gods. Or God who is agitated. <laughs> when he's happy, he does good things. When he's not happy, he does bad things. Jesus that wouldn't be my God. God. Jesus reveals God and Jesus was consistent. He mm. went about doing good. doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yeah. Today, expect only good mm -hmm. all through the day. And for the rest of your life, Expect nothing but good because every perfect gift and every good gift is from the Father of light. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is Let my us father. in the confession. Yeah, God is my Father. His character is to give liberally. His character is to give liberally. Without finding fault in me. Without finding fault in me. He does not find fault at all. So you can confidently and boldly declare what you want before him today. And Father, we join faith with viewers around the world today in the boldness of righteousness. And we take delivery of all that you have provided already in Christ to meet every need. Desires granted. 
Sick bodies, be healed. Every door you've knocked on opens for you. Barriers broken. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, wherever you're hearing the sound of our voice today, receive miracles, miracles of healing, miracles of restoration, receive miracles of favor, enlargement and expansion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Marital miracles, supernaturally, miracles of fruit of the womb, receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Miracles, mm. we declare for you today. And we declare that your going out is blessed, your coming in is blessed, and all through the course of the day, you enjoy the beauty of meditating over all that Christ has done. Mm -hmm. And above all, as you stay in prayer through the course of today, enjoy intimate fellowship with God and grow in the abundance of God's mercy and love and grace and knowledge. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hey guys, make sure you order for a copy of this devotion. You can't go without one. I'm telling you. Get one for you, for family members, for friends and loved ones. You can buy this and just give it to people as gifts and encourage them to read. And pray that as they read, they will encounter revelation knowledge. And that is a service that will not go unrewarded by Jesus Christ. So order. The announcer will tell you how to get this material and order all other materials that we have. For example, I have a book on the true nature of God in mm. Christ. Mm -hmm. The true nature of God in Christ. It's a book that elaborates on the character of God mm. all around. It will help you a lot and it will answer a lot of doctrinal questions that you may have in your mind right now. The true nature of God in Christ, the true nature of God. The announcer will tell you how to order all of these materials. Make sure you order for them today and share with somebody. But we're so excited that we're a blessing in your life. Mm. Just before we wrap up for the day, honey, one word for viewers out there. The character of God is that of a father. That's right. And he gives liberally. That's right. He doesn't find fault. He gives you what is due you. Yeah. And that is his love. That's right. A good father doesn't check his children before he does what he needs to do for no. them. It doesn't matter that fathers today have misrepresented fatherhood. Right, right. But the character of God is that of a father right. who gives liberally. That's Don't forget right. that and he, rejoice in him. And he does not find fault. He doesn't Once find fault. you know that the God you are praying to does not find fault, yes. you're bold. You're, yes. confident. you're confident. You're bold. And that's the mindset you go through you the day with today. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, so whenever you ask in my name, I will do it. So be bold to demand for people to be healed for things to happen and watch them come to pass. Amen. We love you guys. Tell other people about this broadcast and encourage them to hook up to this platform. Till we come again your way tomorrow, same station, same platform. This is Rachel and Abel Damina saying that the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God is in power. Amen. As second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction damnable heresies they create heresies opinions a sect in the church you know it's like some people just came up and said, um, anybody wearing jeans will go to hell. Have you had that teaching before? Yes. Anybody who wears jean trousers will go to hell. So they will put ushers to be checking people as they are coming. If you are wearing jeans, they set you aside. You cannot enter their church. That is a damnable heresy. What is that? A damnable heresy. It's heretic. That's a, heretic. That's a heretic. When you attribute the finished work of Christ to a piece of cloth, to a piece of material. Amen. And some will say, if you don't pay your tithe, things will be tight. That's heresy. And some people even took it to the extreme. If you don't pay your tithe, you will go to hell. Uh-uh. And somebody asks me somewhere, do you believe in tight? I say, no, sir. Do you believe in tight? I say, no, I don't believe in tight. He said, why? I say, I believe in Jesus. There's no scripture that says you believe in tight. 
He says, believe in the Lord Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I don't believe in tithe. Is it clear? I don't believe in tithe. Who do I believe in? Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I don't believe in tithe. I believe in Christ. And that's where some people get angry with me. They say, hey, Dr. Damina is telling people not to pay tithe. He's telling people not to give at all. How will we sponsor the things of God? You have not listened to me. You have itching ears. Tight is not giving. Tight is not giving. Tight is tax. It's a taxation system. That's why they say pay. In giving, we don't pay. Because giving has to do with generosity. What you pay is, it, it means you are owing. But where Christ is concerned, we owe him nothing. What he did for us was not for us to pay. It's called grace. It's called grace. What Christ has done for us is grace. Are we in the house? I was watching one woman preaching today in one of those churches in Lagos. He said, and now you hear people are going around saying, and not, that's exactly what she was saying. And now you go around hearing people are going around saying, Christ has paid it all. Christ has paid it all. You don't need to do anything. My brother, there is generational cause in your family. Even though Christ has paid it all, you still have a part to play. That is Christ plus for salvation. She was busy. Blowing like fire. And I know it's us she's referring to. Us. You know us? Us. <laughs> they are going everywhere. It's a sect. A sect of the Pharisees who are also believers. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They're also believers. But in their minds, their minds are still locked up with the law of Moses. It's their opinion. To say if you don't pay tithe, you will go to hell. It's a personal opinion. It's not a doctrinal teaching. That makes that, that group of, it makes a group, that group of people a sect. A sect. A group with an opinion that is not scripture. Heresies. It's a self-chosen opinion. That's the meaning of the word heresy. A self-chosen opinion. And that word heresies, H-A-I-R-E-S-I-S, heresies is taken from the word herium. Heriomi, heriomi. It means personal. And it's used for strong views. A personal strong view. And the people who bring these heresies into the church, they are very strong about it. They will bring it out of a verse of the Bible that does not have solid exegesis. Just a verse. Then they will carry that verse and stretch it beyond the call of duty. And they will conclude on that verse without any other contextual exegesis on the verse. They won't even read the verses before they will not read the verses after. They just take, in fact, sometimes it may be a sentence in a verse. A sentence. And that's why they hate contextual teaching like we do. Because once we show up, light has come. Once we show up, light has come. We now dismantle what they have done and bring exegesis. And suddenly, what it meant is not what was said. I don't know if you understand it. That's why sound Bible teaching has no alternative. And that's why a pastor must get involved with Torah teaching of scripture. Hallelujah. And sometimes this kind of issues cause division in the church. It causes division. And somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, you are the ones causing division. I said, no, you're wrong. We are not causing division. We are teaching the Bible. It's you people that has no scripture. To back what you claim that are causing division. Because everything we have said, we gave overwhelming scriptural evidence with contextual interpretation of the text. Is that true? Yes, 
So we are not the ones causing. Is they that have abused the scriptures and have taught the scriptures out of context that are causing confusion to the body of Christ. Not we. Strong opinion forced on the gospel. Strong opinion. You hear them say, when praises go up, blessings is fraud. It's fraud. No praise is praise enough to bring a blessing down. No praise is praise enough. If you like praise in mud and bring blood out of your body, it cannot bring down any blessing. No praise can bring any blessing down. None. Why do we praise? We praise to reinforce, to reinforce what we believe in the scriptures in our understanding. That's why what we think must agree with what we are taught. Hello, I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.